All right, this is a bit of an epilogue to my night hike uh, after Black Balsam Road. Um, so I was hiking um, up to that point and had done 11 miles and fully intended to camp at Black Balsam um, Road in that area. And um, you're supposed to carry bear, bear canisters, which I totally support. Um, I had not, and I came into that area with a couple different options. One was uh, to continue past it, which is what I attended attempted to do. Um, the second is uh, to actually find somebody that's maybe camping there and utilize their car and put your food in their car. Amazingly, there was nobody camping there that night. Um, and the third option is just to maybe like get a, uh, you know, meet somebody up there or get a hitch or whatever and kind of go around that area. Um, it was roughly about 12 miles. Uh, so after I ate dinner, um, I looked around to see if anybody was camping yet and nobody was. And as you can see in the video, I continued on, um, which I don't know, in retrospect, that probably wasn't the best decision because that would put me at where I ended up that night, 23 miles, to get in the kind of a uh, area that you can legally camp. Um, but it was fortunate because um, I hiked and I was really moving down through the, I call, call that whole area, the graveyard fields area. And uh, as the light was getting less, I was really moving of trying to use all the light that I could and it got so dark that finally I had to get the headlamp on which doesn't really bother me that much um, I think the, the reason why is I ended up like night running one time I did this race called the hood to coast and it was the most majestic thing to hike in the middle of the night and I think part of hiking in that night time comes from that um, and just the peace and quiet out there well, anyways, I was hiking along, and um, all of a sudden I heard some yelling, and I couldn't quite figure out what it was, and there's really not supposed to be anybody camping in the whole graveyard fields area, so I wasn't expecting to see anybody. Um, so I, I kept going, and, and shortly after I heard even more yelling, so I thought maybe I was, like, startling somebody, because who expects a night hiker to be out? Um, so I kind of did a yell back and back to them and let them know, hey, I'm just a hiker coming down the trail. And uh, it's funny, I talked to one of the people I met later, and she said she kind of thought it sounded like a bear, but then she saw the headlamp and she couldn't quite figure out what it was. Uh, but I came across um, three ladies from Peoria that were classmates from way back when, and they get together, I don't know if it's yearly or whatever, and they had uh, gone down to Graveyard Fields uh, and parked on the parking lot um, kind of late in the day, and then got going up on the trails and got caught in the darkness. Um, they weren't real rattled by it, um, but they had called 911 and search and rescue was deployed at that point. Um, so there was some guy, Mike, I think that was gonna maybe send up like a, a fire truck um, that they were supposed to you know, hike toward or something like that. And the sheriff's deputy was on his way as well. And uh, luckily for them, I had, of course, all these apps on my phone, Gaia GPS and um, and so while it wasn't on the trail that I was on, I could at least look and see where the trail was back um, to that, to the parking lot. And so I gave, I think, one of them my hiking pole, and they had a few flashlights, and I had an extra little flashlight. And basically made our way, I don't know if it was like an hour or so, back to the uh, parking lot. Um, it was kind of wild why, why we were hiking back. It got so foggy up there that I've never seen it so dense where you could barely see like a few feet in front of you on the trail. Um, and so, so I'm thankful that, you know, it turned out the way that it did, that I would happen to be there at the right time. Um, so we went back to the parking lot and they said, well, is there anything you can do? I said, well, as a matter of fact, there is. So then I had them drop me off, um, at around, I think it was mile mark 54 on segment three or two, whatever it is, uh, you know, where I could get to legit kind of camping. Um, so I kind of skipped part of the Mountain to Sea Trail, but I thought it was a pretty good reason um, to do that. And uh, it was pretty surreal, like, when the ladies dropped me off, because it was just, like, on the side of 276, where um, the MST crosses that. And I said, i got to be quick, because it's kind of a, not a really a big shoulder. And so I just, you know, bolted off into the woods, and, and I was gone. And... Uh, I'm sure from their perspective it felt weird just to see me come into their night and then see me like leave uh, and then go camp on the middle of some you know trail in the middle of the night which to me was kind of normal but to them it sounded pretty wild so 
anyway, so that's how uh, I ended up at mile mark, I think, 56 um, on that segment and did, you know, roughly it would have been, let's see, I think I started that day at 33, so it would have been equivalent of 23 miles, but I skipped maybe like 10 or something like that. So that's, that's how that night ended up pretty wild, but glad things worked out.